and welcome back. Thank you for joining us on day two. I would like you to log into your RAS Kids account and click on level M. Find the book called April Fool's Day. Pause the video and start it up again when you are ready. Let's talk about this book before you read it. What kind of book do you think this is? Did you say nonfiction? Great job. You are right. This book gives us factual information about April Fool's Day. Have you ever tricked someone on April Fool's Day? What did you do to trick them? How did they feel about it? Those sound like very clever tricks. I hope the people took it well. Let's turn to the table of contents on page three. Table of contents will get our brains ready for reading. Do you notice how this book is organized? That's right. It's organized into sections that will talk to us about pranking fun, why the date is April 1st, how the day is celebrated around the world, some famous pranks, and even some online pranks. Please turn to the glossary on page 16. How does the glossary help you as a reader? That's very good. The glossary is a tool to help us figure out what the important words in the text mean. Since this book is nonfiction, some of the words may be tricky, so this helps us understand the words that are related to April Fool's Day. Sometimes in our books at school, the glossary words are in bold. In this book, that is also the case, but the glossary does say which word, what, excuse me, which page the words are on. When in doubt, check it out. Go back to page four. What is the heading on this page? Terrific job. The heading is pranking fun. Headings help our brains get ready for what we'll be, we will be reading in this section of the book. What do you think this section will be about? Excellent. This section will tell us a couple of ways victims have been pranked. So what is a victim? Good thinking. A victim is someone who has had something happen to them. You can be a victim of a prank. While victim seems like it might be a negative word, some people think that it is funny if they are a victim of an April Fool's Day prank. Take a look at page five. Under that picture, you see a caption. Do you know how captions help us? Awesome thinking. Captions give us more information about the pictures in a nonfiction book. Now turn to page six. Do you see this blue box? with the title, Gotham Goes Mad. This is called a sidebar. How do sidebars help us? Way to go. Sidebars give us more detail about information that is in the main body of the text. In this case, it gives us more detail about how April Fool's Day may have started. The Around the World section begins on page 8. Please go there.
On each section, on each page in this section, you will see a map that shows where these different pranks have taken place throughout the world. Did you know that April Fool's Day is something we have in common with people all over the world? I didn't know that until today. Okay, you are ready to go back to the beginning and read the entire book. Make sure your reading looks right, sounds right, and makes sense. If it doesn't, you need to reread. When you come back, we will discuss the book. Are you ready? Pause the video until you're finished. See you later. I hope you enjoyed reading this book. Now it's time for a comprehension conversation. You may refer to the book at any time to answer these questions. First, we will have a conversation within the text. Talk about the important information the writer tells in this book. Is there anything else? Great job! This book is about April Fool's Day, which always falls on or near April 1st. It's the day people play jokes on one another for fun. There are a few different theories as to where April Fool's Day originated. April Fool's Day happens all over the world still today, and everyone celebrates it differently. A spaghetti tree prank is actually one of the jokes that became famous a long time ago. Even companies like Taco Bell and Burger King fooled people. It is all in good fun when an April Fool's Day joke is made appropriately. Now our conversation will be beyond the text. Can you think of a time when you pranked someone on April Fool's Day or when you were pranked? Explain. That's funny. I can think of a time when I was a child pranking my parents with a fake detention. They were not happy at first, but they were really relieved when they discovered that it was just a joke. What lesson could you learn from April Fool's Day? You're exactly right. These jokes are all in good fun, so remember not to play mean jokes on people. Also, be sure you can handle a joke yourself before playing a joke on someone else. Finally, we are going to have a conversation about the text. What is the genre of this text? How do you know? You're right. It is nonfiction because it's about the history of April Fool's Day while also giving examples of real April Fool's Day pranks. What do you notice about how the writer organized this text? Correct. The writer used a table of contents and headings to organize each section of this text. Also, the writer used real life photos and captions to explain what was happening within each photo. There are also sidebars with additional information, maps to show you where places are located, and a glossary to help you understand what the words mean in bold. So, if you love April Fool's Day and would like to complete a few extra activities, you could write a letter to a friend describing a April Fool's joke. Be sure your joke follows the rules described in the book. Another activity is to research another country that celebrates April Fool's Day. Have fun!